so like, how does okay? So given that as Africans, and now I'm, I'm, this extends beyond mm-hmm. South Africa because yeah. the entire continent has been colonized and plundered. So right. as Africans, we now exist in a home that is no longer our home because we're made to feel that we're not welcome here. How do we begin to heal? Through a modality, i.e., psychology, yeah. that is inherently white supremacist. I think we don't. I think we should just scrap that all together. Interesting. Um, and I mean, I don't mean this in a sense of being dismissive of mental illness or the effectiveness of psychotherapy, but the mm. issue with psychotherapy, as is, like the founding fathers are Carl Young, the racist who went yeah. to study in Kenya and Uganda in Uganda um, primitive psychology it lets you know we're not even what subhuman he thought. Yeah. We're outside of that space like he likened wow. Africans to chimpanzees and apes because like wow. human beings are, were, were descended from primates and the closest is apparently black people you know to this wow. to this man's interpretation of behavior yeah. like the problem with psychology is that like whiteness particularly the white man the white man is the standard Franz Fanon I don't know if you're familiar with him the author Franz of Fanon. yeah the black fi- skin the... white moss like yes. gets into that That's quite my well, into that book of black skin white moss um, mm. about how in in because he was a, a psychiatrist as well and worked in Algeria and France and yeah, yeah wrote really awesome literary works and essay around um, the black male psychology and the white male psychology and how like the black male psychology is not even the derivative of the white male psychology. The white male psychology is the standard, right? And there are no considerations, cultural considerations of whatever it is, you know, you're going through. You know, I've seen a number of articles, I've read even articles around um Ubungoma, which is basically the process of becoming a Sangoma, like a healer, a seer, a clever yeah. person. You don't just wake up and become that person. You know, like how right. mediums do it. Like, oh, I had a vision. Now I am doing this. It's a trained yeah. thing. It's a family thing. Because back right, in the day, right. each family played its part. Like we were a community. You know, it wasn't just right. like, oh, this is oh, Bobo Machila and, his, and her people. They just hear. Like, what are the Majilas doing? Oh, the Majilas are the farmers of said community, the, su- the food suppliers. Oh, okay, what are the Kuzwayas? Oh, the Kuzwayas are, are the hunter-gatherers. If you're trying to mm. get seeds or if you're trying to get meat or whatever, that's where you go. Who are the goddess or whatever? They are the warriors. They're the security team. They make sure we here we safe and they let us know of danger and stuff like that. Everybody had their right. part to play. It was very much a socialist matriarchal setup. Before, okay. you know, colonization. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think... I know, like, we are hybrids at this point. It's what I like to refer to our generation as, and even a few before us, um, where we've had to reconcile our African identity, the self-concept, you know, of who we are in terms of our, like, core beliefs, and our experiences, our memory and influences. And like, Mm. we cannot ignore that our influences and memories and experiences are largely informed by a very much white space or previously. Wait, can you elaborate on that? Okay, so even though I like live, like I'm currently in Zambia now and I am a South African, I, I live in South Africa, right? I'm visiting in Zambia and whatnot. Like you can clearly see how the different countries have been affected by colonization. You know, right, we right. can we cannot ignore privilege. I cannot even ignore the fact that you and I are speaking about dismantling our psychology in English. Oh my god, <laughs> the irony! Like the, Wait, the I'm possession. Spiraling. I'm actually spiraling. The disposition, you know, of the displacement is so deep. Like even when you dream, Bobo, yeah. do you dream in Swahili or Zulu or English? When you think at this point, yeah, at this when point, when you think to yourself, I, what language do you use? In English, I'm exactly. fully a white man. I <laughs> there's a white man that lives inside my body because like, you know, 
at this point, well, for me specifically, I've lived in so many different countries that I yeah. I moved from South Africa when I was still a little kid. Yeah. So I stopped speaking the language while I was still learning the language. Yeah. I can understand it. Like I can still I get understand that. Donna I totally get Zulu. that from you as yeah. well. Like I. And like I, I totally also get it from people that grew up on the continent because a lot right. of the time English and Afrikaans are prioritized so that you can survive. Yes, because right? that's, that's the, the universe. That that's the mode of instruction in a lot of the places in South Africa. Yeah, and if you unfamiliar, you're not going to make an income. Sis. You won't get that degree. That's it. You're not going to get that employment in your own country. In your own country, fam. Bruh. <laughs> like. You Imagine be, you'll never. Ha- this doesn't happen in France. Everything literally. is in French. The food menus, the people speak French. Like this is doesn't even happen in China. Nowhere. No, no Africans except, are the only people who are fully displaced from everything that they are, and have to even like, continental Af- even continental Africans. You know, and have to always play this game of reconciling. You know. I was fortunate enough to have a very traditional family as well mm. as a very westernized family. I don't know how it worked, but I think my grandparents did a really great job of being like, yes, English and education is important because you need to survive, yeah. but also do not lose your mother tongue, right? Because you also need that to survive. Contrary to what, you know, these previously white institutions um say about integration and how we we are post-racial space now and rainbow nation you know i just feel like you can't madiba said centuries of white supremacist violence all the time right right yeah yeah (laughs) yeah you 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 can't our greatest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure everything you know yeah like yeah. also it's suspicious about how people like mandela prioritize and people like um bantu steve biko chris honey and robert subukwe and mir and, and mirin makeba and winnie tingza mandela are not at the forefront because they were considered mm. like more like radical and whatever because they also confronted these issues you know about how we were like you know how intellectuals and freedom fighters like to dismantle and theorize and intellectualize amongst yeah. themselves liberation but not where they're from in the language that is understood oh interesting yeah. so then now yeah, they end up becoming there's always the disconnect yeah. yeah so now they end up becoming this new category of like not black but not exactly white like well yeah. a friend of mine actually um i, f- I forget his name or oh, it's Mampala Rampala, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not too sure. He wrote an essay about it, about like the new non-whites. Yes. Like you, you're not, you're not black, but you're also not white. So you like a non-white. Like class. I relate to that entirely. Yeah. I relate it, to that entirely. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you can, like, we, you cannot deny that mental illness is an issue. Like there are things that, that are like dysfunctional behavior, but also, the reason why I'm saying it's unhelpful, like to go about the traditional psychotherapy of ways and not do like a combination of things is because who determined the dysfunction? It Ooh, was the homophobic, racist, old white men, right? Right. And everything else, it trickles down, you know, there are no cultural considerations of, you know, in terms of Goma, sometimes you hear and see things, right? That aren't there. In psychology, that is considered schizophrenia or dissociative yes. personality disorder. Like you're having See, hallucinations. I like want to talk about delusions. this too, of how like African spirituality is directly in opposition to psychology. It to the really practice is. Of psychology. And it actually so, shouldn't be because psychology, like we discussed earlier, is like stemmed from philosophy in a way. A lot mm. of the psychology actually stems from ancient African philosophy, ancient Chinese and Indian and Greek, you know? Yeah. Oh, well, okay. I want to talk about like your experience. Um, 
So you were saying that your mom, or was it your grandma? Yeah, my grandmother was. Your grandmother is a healer. Like a healer. And that it's genetic. It's passed down by genetics. And so I think not so much as genetics, but it's passed down by God. It's a loose way of saying God. But like, as we all know, English is a very limiting language. So yeah, I'm literally yeah. reducing <laughs> what it is I'm <laughs> trying to say. A very big concept. To the yeah, bare minimum. Yeah. To the yeah. bare minimum. Like even with the greeting, a lot of the time when people learn Zulu, they're told that Sabona means hello, hi. And that's not what it is. Sabona means yeah. I see you and the people you Yes, I was going to say. You. Yes. That's what yes. it means, essentially. But because we're trying to... That's, that's the problem as well with like you know psychology it's we trying to reduce you and mini- minimize our experience to like the white gaze so it's as understandable to a culture that a never was meant to be understood by yes. us or created for and by us if that makes sense no the language barrier is especially interesting because it's something i like i've tried to explain to a friend of mine who's mm. american it's like I feel like English as a language is pretty, it's it's very literal. Like a chair is a chair, money is money. Like everything yeah. is very literal. It's a very straight language. Absolutely. African languages, on the other hand, are very metaphorical. It's so actually, we don't speak very intellectual in languages. words. Yeah, we don't speak in words more than we do in stories and phrases. Listen. And like, you know, Listen. so the, there's never a direct translation of anything. Like what you're saying, something as simple as hello, that Has isn't to be a word in so Zulu. There's no word in Tswana or Zulu that is hello. It is, I see you. Like I see you and I hear you. The yeah. reply is, I hear and see you. I'm here, I'm yes. present. And like, yes. you cannot... Interp- like you have to be embedded in the culture and the language to interpret that. Yes. Like, it's, like, yeah. like I said earlier, language normalizes, right? Mm. And it, it, it helps you recognize and familiarize things. And now as, as, as this person, like you and myself, operating this duality of being white men, <laughs> as you yeah, said, yeah. in black yeah. bodies, yes. it's, it's wild. <laughs> Like, no, it's, it's wild. Yeah. Because if I'm sitting at this in this therapy session, even with black people, like I've I've seen black therapists. Um, my sister has even my sister was diagnosed with schizophrenia as well, which turned out not to be so. Um, like I mentioned earlier, uh, my grandmother was a Sangoma, right? And this yeah. thing gets passed down. Um, my late great aunt was uh, a Sangoma as well. She passed away. So the next yeah. person was either one of her kids, which I don't know, passed one of her kids, passed everybody else. And then my, mm. my, el- my late eldest sister had it. I still struggle to refer to her in the past tense. So don't mind me if I'm referring to her in the present tense. And yeah, she started hearing things and seeing people that weren't there. Like it first started with my grandmother, you know, she'd mm. come and see her all the time and she'd always feel like she's being led to a river. Like she's, she, she, she always feels submerged in the river and, and would be seeing very strange things in said river. Um, right. You know, and creatures apparently that she couldn't really um, speak to. And she was a very, like, staunch Christian lady. Like, I'm talking about, like, he, she, her whole diet and way of life was informed by the Bible. Like, she went right. to the extremist route of Christianity. And yeah. she didn't know what to do. Like, she thought she was being possessed by an evil spirit. Um, there were evil spirits in the house, she used to think. And, like, I'm also very intuitive. I, I don't like to think of myself as particularly a Sangoma or someone who's particularly clairvoyant or can predict the future or whatever. I just yeah. trust the vibes. You okay. Know? So like parts of it have been passed down to you. I think parts of it. I think all of us have parts of it. Like all of us have right. parts of it. Like my brother and I have a really crazy connection. Like when he's sick, I get sick. When I'm oh, sick, he okay. gets sick. I remember when I was yeah. even in a car accident, when I was hit by a car, he literally fainted. And oh, we are wow. on, I was on the other side of the world. Wow. Different time zone. You know? 
and that it happened all at once. So we very, very like close in our language. Um, it said "sialamana," like we are. Uh, I can't even <laughs> find the word. There's no translation for <laughs> it. <laughs> it's my yeah. word. Okay, "oglamana" means um, we we like a hand. You know, like the palm of your hand and the back of your hand. Yeah, yeah. "Sialamana," like yeah. it's one hand. The palm is okay. different from the back of it, but they serve. Yeah, you you're know, inextricably connected. Yeah, they're inextricably linked. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Both by blood and and both spiritually, like we like three mm. years apart, but like we we quite close. So yeah, basically, like she was in and out of like psychiatric wards. Her her marriage fell apart. Like my sister, my late sister, was very beautiful. So like there was always a man on a knee proposing to her. There were always cows coming to the homestead you yeah, know like yeah. we asked we saw a flower in your garden you know we'd like to please you know take her in to be our bride you know by, by the time my, when my sister was like 25 she had had at least eight or nine different proposals not just from like yeah you know our community but from everywhere even like one of like um a sweaty royal, I won't mention who, uh, one of the sweaty royal's sons came by and was like, anything. And my sister was like, 11th wife? I don't think so. <laughs> but mm. yeah, she she was like that that girl, you know, like beautiful, smart, well-educated. Like she had about like five different degrees and like self-sufficient, like a sophisticated, beautiful, smart lady and like, and super Christian. So like all these things that were happening to her, or outside of the realm of what she knew or chose not right. to know because we we I know you're a vegan but I don't mean to offend you or other vegans and whatnot um, yeah I'm actually like I don't like to even label myself a vegetarian I think I, my diet is p- predominantly plant-based it's a plant-based mm. diet but I always say I can't be vegan or vegetarian because I'm Zulu we slaughter for ceremonial reasons Oh, right. right. Yeah. Like yeah. the blood thing is important. Like, I don't yeah. know, Christians be offended. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's, that's my culture. We don't do it for fun. Like we don't shoot yeah. animals for sports like Eric Trump. I'm dead. Like we don't yeah. do it for fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we're not out here eating hippos and like killing cows No, but for it, fun. like historically all, if not most indigenous like indigenous cultures have that relationship with animals. Like I always say like, yeah. And sometimes the animals it's really won. unreasonable. Yeah. It's really unreasonable to expect or to try and force indigenous cultures to be vegan because the problem with the problem with eating meat in the West is animal agriculture. It's not yeah. like, yeah, it's not the inherent and, relationship that humans have with animals. Yeah. And like we even wear animal skins, like Ipe shoes made out of like cowhide. And mm. if, like, your royal, like, some of your Ipeshu as a man is made out of, like, um, leopard skin. And even then, you're not just going to go hunt the leopard. It's you and the leopard. And you see, you a leader. Show us your brain. Yeah. Show us you can fight and win. They'll yeah. send you there. Go fetch your hide. You want your hide? Go fetch it. And sometimes it the leopard be, wins. Hey? <laughs> and sometimes the leopard wins and you don't get your hide. And sorry... That's it. We mourn you, we bury you, move on. Yeah, but that's what it should be. Like, yeah. it, like if we're going to eat animals, we must be part of, like, the chain. Like, the cycle. Like, the food chain. All. Yeah. Yeah, even, like, also with the cattle, it's very much a spiritual thing. That's why you don't just kill them all off. You don't buy and sell anyhow or whatever. Yeah. Like, I know with my family and my clan, I'm not going to speak on behalf animals. of everyone else. I want to yeah. sit, sit here and be like, on behalf of all Zulu people, this is what we do. Specific yeah. to the Kode clan, specific to the Zulu tribe, with which I am, you know, located. Right. I, I was still telling the story about my sister. So, yeah, she went in and out. And then I, like, spoke to her. And I'm like, sis, maybe let's go consult a healer. She was like, no, that's demonic. We believe in God. God will heal me. God will heal me. God will heal me. But then mm. I shared with her about how, because I was sexually assaulted, sexually abused as a child, and how because we grew up in such a Christian household and my mother prayed like no other, I used to always ask Jesus, God, somebody to help me and pray and never worked. And I remember the one time mm. 
I called on my late grandmother by her name. And I said, Dombela, like your son's harming me. Like my, yeah. my uncle, like that sexually assaulted me, passed out that day, pants down. Wow. And the helper came and I got help. My, my, I told my mother wow. everything. I got the help that I needed and I was put on the medication and everything that I needed. Because to this wow. day, even though like the trauma happened and it's done, I have a displaced pelvis and an incompetent uterus. Oh, I can't wow. have babies for shit. Even if I wanted All to, there are operations like, wow. and pre- medical procedures put in place where I could, but one, they're very expensive. And two, mm. um, they very much high risk for somebody like me. I might not survive yeah. them. I don't know about you, anybody else, but I'm not trying to die and not yeah. get to yeah. see the life I bring forth. Also, I don't think the world is a safe enough place for anybody, let alone a child. Oh my I can God. barely don't protect myself as a black woman. What do I look like bringing a life into a situation where I can barely don't protect myself? Don't get me myself? started. <laughs> like don't get a, me started. Yeah. Bruh, into a country where every 26 seconds a woman is being raped and killed. Like, what do I look like? Uh, or murder. Yeah. At the hands of a man. You know, I can barely yeah. walk out at like when the sun comes up. No, even when the sun is up without being in danger. And now yeah. I bring a poor defenseless child into a situation like that. No, it's just not justifiable. Yeah. Like it's just, it's truly not justifiable. So yeah, eventually my sister gives in because she couldn't like, she was getting on that Van Gogh situation of like, I'm about to cut my ears. I'm like, let's just go consult her. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So then we go, um, we were guided to, I, well, I was guided. I had a particular dream. My grandmother came to me again and in my dream and showed me like a particular cave there's this um elderly lady um where we're from who in psychology should be described as agoraphobic diagnosed with agoraphobia uh, what? <laughs> Wait, what is agoraphobia is just she 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 like describes herself as, a, as an empath like she says her powers are so potent that she feels everything all the time Mm, right so okay. she she became a like a community recluse essentially and lived in a cave like just outside like the village yeah so nobody really knows where she is apparently you can't really find her not unless she wants to be found and i guess she had the same dream is what she had said in the consult um the same dream and made herself known when we got to this particular river my sister and i and she came by and she was like, hey, Bali Tusi, which is my late sister's name. Um, I've been waiting on you guys. I'm like, oh, this girl, this woman is a real deal. <laughs> okay. So I keep quiet. We cross. We get in there. She throws her bones. The bones, by the way, are essentially crystals, shells, and um, your, the bones of that healer's particular totem animal, right? Yeah. So we yeah. all have totem animals. Um, there, for instance, like there's a clan known as Onlovu. Onlovu directly translated means elephant. So, like obviously, they took an animal is an elephant. So, if yeah. you're a healer and you're Onlovu, you'd have some bones, like the tooth maybe, or like the hoof bone, or something of an elephant as part of like your bones. I don't know the mm. whole setup of. You know, because I haven't been initiated. I haven't gone to school and training for it. Yes, there's school and training for it, by the way. Just because you inherit yeah. it doesn't mean now you can just practice. Um, mm. So we go and obviously I couldn't be in. It's like a, a, a consultation with a doctor. Like doctor, doctor, patient confidentiality, Sangoma, patient confidentiality. I don't know what was said to her yeah. or what had happened. Next thing, she was like, no, I have to be initiated. Um, I shouldn't have come here. You know, Mali, this is like deviant behavior. Our grandfather was a priest. And I'm like, yeah, but our grandmother was also a Sangoma. And we cannot forsake one for the other. Like, they existed in a home marriage for almost 50 years together. Mm. Like, why can't we exist in the same marriage within ourselves as individuals, you know? And yeah, she was like, washed her hands of it. 
and really seriously got sick and passed. Um, oh, not by our own, own hand, thank goodness. Um, but just, she just, I guess, in a way it wasn't by her own hand because she stopped taking her own medication, she stopped eating and it led to complications with her kidneys and like organs and her heart and it just all got to be a bit too much. Um, with that too, I I had a dream of her passing a couple of days before and I was like stressing that we should be close to her, try to help her, otherwise she's not going to make it. And my family being who they were, were just like, we will pray. And I'm like, no, we need to light with a impepo. We need to light candles. We need to beg Nkulungulu, God, for help. Like, just because you, you guys say amen or Jesus or whatever, it doesn't mean we're praying to different things. Like, like acknowledging your ancestors doesn't mean that they are demonic or we are worshiping or praying to yeah, our ancestors yeah. like how, what i cannot reconcile is that how can an entity that fought for your land that fought for your very existence without even knowing you'd be here how are you considering them demonic mm, and the yeah. jesus that was used to subjugate you into violent submission God. and rob yeah. you of your of your possessions, of your language, of your culture, not be perceived as violent and demonic. Mm, that's that's the tea. Like that's how, a very like how, take, like everything associated yeah. with Christianity, crusades, colonialism, like everything associated no, with like Zulu spirituality, Ubuntu, which is humanity and compassion and collective accountability. You know. Self awareness, yeah, wow. collective awareness. These are the things that are associated with African spiritual spirituality. So you are right, friend. They're in direct opposition. Yeah. One says, yeah. "Take exploit, take what you can, give nothing back." The other says, "Take what you can, but also make sure to share and give back mm. what you may." Like that well, cycle think is very important. Yeah. No, it, it absolutely is. Do you think that there is a way to marry the two schools of thought? Like, I mean, I've been trying it. Way? Like, I've been trying yeah. it. Like, um, I also have the same problem with, like, language in terms of my thinking. And when I dream, I dream in different languages. <laughs> and, like, oh, when I think, even now as I speak, I don't know if you've noticed a bit of a stutter in the way I speak. Like, at I Grapevine, I think when we did that thing, that, that, that panel discussion together... Um, yeah. I was stuttering a bit because I was trying to interpret my, like, I was trying to get it from Zulu to Kosa to Swati to Tswana and Debele, then Afrikaans, then English, then get it to what it is I'm trying to say. Oh, wow. Okay. If that, like, do, okay. if, 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 if that makes That's sense. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, I'm really wondering if there's a way. So, like, for example, the, ex the, the example that you gave with schizophrenia and um, someone who was seeing people who wasn't there because of spiritual reasons is now being diagnosed as schizophrenic. And I'm someone who is constantly questioning the nature of reality, who's constantly questioning, who like, like I don't believe that there is objective reality. So I always wonder like to what extent like, where do we draw the line between acknowledging that someone is going through something spiritual versus someone is sick? Thank you for listening to the first half of this conversation. If you're interested in listening to the rest of this conversation, you will find it on Patreon. So please support my Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash Bobo's Void or you can just click on the link in the description box below. If you enjoyed this conversation, I'll be having so many more of these types of conversation with different friends, with different strangers, with all types of interesting people and sometimes just conversing with myself. If you are interested in philosophy, politics, race, all the things I'll be hosting all the conversations on my patreon so patreon.com 
slash Bobo's Void or just click on the description box below and support me. Thank you.